Hi, Dan Johnson here at Sun and Fun 2012, and we're getting to talk to Robert Snyder today, who's done some interesting flying in the machine we see behind us, which is the Autogyro, and the model name is the Sal Calidus. Calidus, I believe, is the way you say it. Robert, welcome to Sun and Fun. Thanks. And you have flown here now two times, I understand. Yes, twice to Sun and Fun, twice to uh, Sebring. Twice to Sebring. So evidently, this is not what a lot of people think oh, yeah. about a gyro being a uh, cool little toy to go around a small area in, but you don't really go very far. No, this is in this one, time. you go places. Tell us how that worked. How many, how many hours did it take you to get down here from, he's based in uh, Maryland. And so um, I don't know how to equate that in driving time or something people might it's relate to. It's about 16 to, hours to drive. 16 hour drive. Okay, let's do that. And now tell me how it was to fly the auto gyro calibers down <laughs> it, here. It's great. It's, uh, it's about 800 miles, nautical miles to come down. It took me eight hours to get here. Okay. That included my fuel stops. I had two fuel stops coming down. Two stops, okay, that's pretty good. So that gives you a range of uh, 250 or more it's, nautical miles? It's not so much uh, the range of the aircraft, it's my range. It's human range, yes, yes I, I know about that very well. <laughs> People will talk about thousand mile ranges. I don't know what they do in the cockpit, but I don't want to know anymore. I like to stop and do it somewhere else. <laughs> so what's this powered by? What is the engine we got in here? This has got a uh, Rotax 912 ULS 100 horsepower. There is an option for the 914 turbo. Okay. We felt that uh, here on the East Coast, we probably really didn't need the extra power. Our dealers out in uh, Utah, they've opted for the 914. Sure, high elevation. Right, yeah. higher elevation. And I think if uh, a dealer down here with a uh, uh, you know, density altitude you might want a 914 also. Yeah, it's low elevation here, but there gets to be some pretty sky-high humidity at exactly. times, and that's one of the three elements that makes a, a need for a little more power at times. This is a really lovely piece of equipment here. Is this all? Uh, talk to me a little bit about construction, Robert. It appears to be all either carbon fiber or fiberglass yes, or something the, like that. The, the I don't see steel structure anywhere, so no, it's all cockpit, composite. Uh, the cockpit uh, is uh, a... Um, they call that. No, yeah, it's a sandwich, and they autoclave it to uh, to get all the uh, voids out. And from what I understand, it's autoclaved on two separate occasions: once when they make the shell, and then once when they put the inner shell in. I see. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> I, see, I see. It's got a whole inner uh, function to it as well, or inner uh, fitments to it as well. But it's, it looks like. Well, this is a big boy airplane. Yes, it is. The average American can fit in this aircraft, I believe. There is a <laughs> I weight think I'd kind of yeah. be wallowing around in here with room out to the sides. We're going to get in, in a little yes. bit. There is a weight limit per seat, 275. 275 per seat, yes. okay. And why is that? Because of structure, because of weight and balance, or? Structure. Okay. okay. Um, the, That's still pretty good size, though. Right. That's, Some of the other materials that are interesting is the mast and uh, engine mounts are stainless steel. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see the stainless through the little opening here. And so the basic principle be be that differentiate gyro from a helicopter. Now a lot of people think they know that the helicopter is a driven blade, uh, gyrocopter is not. But give me, give me the short explanation of what's the difference between the two, just for those watching the video. The air goes up through the rotor blades on a gyro down through the rotor blades on a helicopter. That's a pretty simple explanation. That's uh, the, the basic. And so really what's doing the work is you're getting pusher. Correct. Uh, moving this, out of the engine. It needs to part. have forward motion to remain airborne. And how much forward motion? In, in a no wind condition, what does it take? This particular airplane is about 32 miles an hour. 32 miles an hour. To maintain altitude. And given a 100 horse uh, engine and a slick fuselage and all, I'm guessing you get there pretty quick. What's the ground roll to do that? About in a no wind situation. No wind condition. And this is the worst possible situation. Is, right, so. is 300 feet. 300 feet, you're off the ground in a gyro. Yes. Great. Now, but, let's let's say it's a 15 mile an hour wind, which would be a nice breeze. I'm guessing it's a lot shorter than, is it that is right? It is a lot shorter. How short? Uh, probably less than 50 feet. <laughs> 50 feet, but so. But this will also have an auto rotator on it. This is, this is always an auto rotation. You're, I think you're thinking of a pre-rotator. Pre-rotator, pre I'm sorry. Pre-rotator will... Um, that spins the blades up ahead of yes, time. Yes, and that will take it uh, to a max of uh, 240. Usually we start our takeoff roll right around 200. Now normally that would bring an extra 
um, shaft or something up there then to get that spinning. Do you have yes. that capability on this aircraft? That is. Okay. It's, uh, is that the gear that I'm seeing up there? Exactly. Okay. And so you, you, you do, you, how often do you use that component of this? Every takeoff? Every takeoff. Okay, so you always spin it up. Yes. And how long does that take in time? Uh, talking a minute or several minutes or what? Probably less than a minute. Okay, so pretty quick then, just to get it going. Yes. Of the total speed of rotation of the rotor disc, how much does that impart, maybe in percentage or RPM or something? It's about 80%. Oh, okay, so you're getting pretty well there then, yes. just with that. That's driven off of the engine as well? And that's also in a new wind situation. Ah, you've yes, got right. a little bit of wind, it, that helps The, the pre-rotation also goes quicker yes. with wind? Because you're angling the blade? Wind is your friend in this aircraft. <laughs> well, it is in all aircraft that I know of, but really so here. Huh? Right. Excellent. Well, one of the advantages of the gyro is that wind really doesn't bother it. I mean, you can fly these things as, you know, 34 mile an hour wind. It's not like a wing where you get the buffeting action. Well, That's I've kind of correct. seen that. Yes. The gyro guys always seem to fly when a lot of other people are going, mm, maybe not now. A, a day like today, with all these puffy clouds, you can have a lot of thermal activity. It's kind of transparent in this airplane. Is that right? Yes. Just, it's just kind of chops factor. them all up. Huh? It's not a factor. <laughs> Well, you know what I think we need to do, because I'm kind of intrigued by the interior, why don't we get inside it? Yeah, there's a lot of room in here. I could eat some more hamburgers. <laughs> one, of the, one of the nice things about this is that you can eat and root. <laughs> um, usually I put my drinks on the other side and the snacks on this side, and I can just reach behind and grab them when I'm, when I'm flying so uh, So I see some of the reason to have the extra width here is because the rear uh, seat uh, pilot has his rudder pedals here, much like a tandem on a Cub or any kind of aircraft has a similar situation. Correct. But boy, it does make for a lot of room. Did you fly down here solo? Yes, I did. So you can carry a bunch of stuff and you're really pretty comfortable in here. Now, in a regular helicopter, you've got two controls and it seems like you pretty much have to have your hands on them all the time. The collective and the, and the pitch control or whatever it's all called. That's out of my range of knowledge. But in a gyro, how hands off is the flying, Robert? One of the demos that I usually do for you know, helicopter knowledgeable people is as I'm climbing out after takeoff. <laughs> and do I they do, this. do they get a little angry? This is what you do not do in a helicopter. <laughs> and I'll do the entire climb out and just add a little rudder as I as I turn. So, so it's a very natural feel here. I mean I and I discovered this in my one and only flight in a gyro which was the Magni that once I was in it, if I didn't look up at the spinny thing I noticed that it felt pretty much like flying any aircraft. And the action was pretty much like it. Stick left and rudder left to go left and so forth. It, is it is it it's, the same? It's, yeah, in fact, most of my stick movement in flying is a circle about that big. So you're just doing fingertip. The aircraft is very responsive, very predictable. So I'm a typical guy, I'm a fixed wing guy, and I say, hey, you know, this rotor has always fascinated me. And I'm a pretty high time fixed weight pilot. That may be a negative, I don't know, but what's the transition time for someone who has decent aptitude, let's say? Average eight to ten hours, and it's really going to depend on And then what are you ready for flown. solo, or then are you you're pretty ready well for, ready? You're pretty ready for solo. Okay. You know, and okay. I wouldn't say that your training is complete there, but you're But then you well can do it on your own. Yes. You go out and do yes, it. Yes, you're, you're capable of pass a PTS at that point. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty it, short, eight yeah. to ten hours. That's not bad. It depends on what you've flown in the past. Sure. I've noticed the guys that have got some ultralight experience or anything that's got high drag. They uh, get it better? Catch on a little ah, faster. Yeah. Okay, well, that might go a little faster. That's kind of a lot of my background is that kind of slow. But if you're used to, let's say, a Bonanza, that's all you ever flew. Yeah, it's going to be a little longer than that. What's going to happen is, is that I'm going to teach you how to fly it like an airplane. So that you're going to do run-on landings, powered ah, approaches. Okay, okay. Then we'll transition to gyroplane flying, which is now we're going to have way steeper approaches, and you know you can actually you can be a thousand feet over the numbers, do a vertical descent, back up a little bit from the numbers. <laughs> it's not a this gyro. is not and in this particular Celadus in, in particular. It's a lot of it sounds like the stick and rudder part, pretty much what you know anyway, with maybe the exception of the vertical descent part. Usually for a transition pilot, they have to get. Uh, used to the steep descent that happens. They have to get used to flying slow because they're always afraid to stall. Okay. This airplane does not stall. You can fly it at zero airspeed. You can fly it backwards. Don't stall. Now in a no. So 
when the airplane, I mean, I see an airplane that's all completed here, but I know FAA has not yet given their blessing to the SLSA, the fully built SLSA that's correct. project. Uh, so how do you bring it in, Robert, and uh, I gather as a kit, and then how long does it take a builder if that's the case? Correct. They're brought in as kits. Uh, it takes a builder approximately 40 hours to build the aircraft. So one good work week, you can get her done? Yes, and what we what we like to do is we like to get the builders in on a Sunday. <laughs> they start bright and early Monday morning, build, and then around lunchtime we're going to take a break with them and we're going to get them to fly a little bit. And then they come back and they've got more uh, incentive to twist wrenches. Sure, sure, give them a little satisfaction right away. And, our, and I'm sure there's a great deal more that you can uh, put out to people on a website. Tell me uh, where in Maryland uh, you're based and then give us your web address. Please, okay, Robert. we are based at Bay Bridge Airport, Whiskey 29, in Stevensville, Maryland. It's right near uh, Annapolis. It's on the eastern okay. shore. Okay. Beautiful area to fly. We're right outside the SFR. You do training, I assume? Yes, we okay. do. Okay, for those that need that sort of thing? Uh, we train in Gyro. We train, uh, we're, in fact, we're part of the largest flight school in the country from Sport Pilot, from what I understand. Uh, Chesapeake. Chesapeake, Sport okay, Pilot. right. Yeah, we all know that name. Great, and your web address? Mm -hmm. Web address for the Autogyro is www.autogyrousa.com. Okay, pretty simple. Thank you very much for talking to us today, educating me and our viewers about uh, auto gyros and gyros in general. Thanks so much for doing that. Safe trip back home. More information on this and other aircraft in the light sports space can be found on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.